Hey everyone, this is Mike with the One Stop Co-op Shop, and I'm so excited to be back to playing my favorite game of all time, Arkham Horror LCG. I know Colin's the one who's usually playing this. But Fantasy Flight sent me a review copy of the Scarlet Keys, the new uh, investigator and campaign expansions. So I'm going to play through the prologue and see how things go. And if you don't know what's new about the Scarlet Keys, this one is a world hopping, gallivanting adventure where you can play the scenarios in basically any order. I haven't actually uh, played it yet. and You're going to see me uh, experiencing it for the first time. But the idea of it sounds really cool, kind of closer to sort of the eldritch horror style of doing things. So the prologue starts with some choices and some narrative. I use the timestamps if you want to skip right to the gameplay. The dark stifles. It moves like a living creature, constricts the air as if you were inside a shapeless cocoon. A figment of your anxious and overactive imagination, you hope. But everything about this meeting puts your nerves on edge. You almost didn't accept the mysterious invitation, but recent events have forced your hand. It's been several months since the disappearances began, and all of your leads in Arkham have dried up. It started in the winter of 1924 with several vehicles in Southside. Two Studebakers, a Cadillac, and a Rolls-Royce, all of them top of the line. One moment they were there, the next, nothing, save for a single deflated wheel. The police believed it to be the work of bootleggers looking for more vehicles to add to their routes, but the cars were too nice, would draw too much attention. Perhaps they were taken down to Boston or New York and flipped for a pretty penny, and that's just what you figured happened until the disappearances continued. Next to go was a street lamp outside the Ward Theater in downtown. Then two pets, a dog and a cat, whisked away almost simultaneously right out from under their owner's noses, not two doors down from one another. You learned the news when you saw the missing posters plastered all over College Street. On a whim, you interviewed the owners. No sign of foul play, and it was unlikely for them to have run away. Something stank about all of it. Then people started to disappear. A child from Easttown, a student in Miskatonic University, the chief of Arkham's fire department. And as the police closed each case with no clues or suspects, a curious thing began to happen. One by one, as time marched on, the things that went missing vanished not only from Arkham, but from memory. The owners of these vehicles suddenly claimed to have never owned them. The pets, the people, all of them were wiped from the memories of every single person in town. Everyone but you. You and you alone remembered. Perhaps it was simply the way of things. Humans are fickle and forgetful by nature, but it couldn't be so simple. It was just too strange. Coincidental. That's when the letter arrived. Greetings. I hope this letter finds you well. You do not know me, but I know you. I cannot tell you much through paper correspondence as it may be intercepted. Suffice it to say that I know of the matters you are looking into, and I also know that you believe yourself to be alone in your investigation. The truth is that you are not alone. Such events are not unique to your city of Arkham. What you have observed is happening in major cities all over the world. I am one of those like you who seeks the truth, who remembers. There is another related matter which I must bring to your attention. I need your help, and you need mine. Encloses a ticket to a show at the Riverview Theater. If you wish to know more, please meet me there and we can speak further. Come alone. In truth, Lee Flint. The ticket in the envelope was indeed for a private showing in Arkham's new movie palace in downtown. With no other leads and no good reason to avoid going, you've decided to accept the mysterious invitation. Just as you are beginning to suspect that you have been played, you see a shadow approaching from the aisle. The figure spots you at once, sliding into the seat in front of you. He wears wide, horn-rimmed glasses and a high-collared jacket over a silk vest. His brown hair is cut short and parted to one side, and he sports a handsome, neatly trimmed beard. To your relief, no other figures emerge from the shadows. You ask if you are speaking to Lee Flint, earning a slight nod from the man in front of you. He does not turn to speak, instead letting his voice carry softly over the silent images on screen. Indeed, he says. Inspector Lee Flint, with the International Criminal Police Commission, and I'm sure you have a great many questions, but we are unfortunately short on time. Doubly so if you are working alone. Prudent, however. You should trust no one, given the circumstances. Not even me. Flynn produces a file, fat with documentation, and slides it between the two seat cushions in front of you. Inside is a wealth of information regarding cases similar to the ones you've been investigating. Photos of vehicles, factory machines, and public figures all missing, all forgotten. And just as Flint's letter promised, the file includes reports from all over the world. London, Shanghai, Bruges, Rio de Janeiro, Cairo, the list goes on and on. There's more, he says after giving you time to read. Flip to the end. You do, and what greets you there are two photographs clipped together. The first is of a street in London, distorted by some sort of interference. A light shines above the street corner, and around it, the picture appears to be pinched, 
like a miniature vortex is pulling reality toward it. The other is a photograph of a man on the other side of that same street corner ducking into the shadows. He wears a tailored gray suit and a wide-brimmed hat that obscures his face. The only discernible detail you can make out from the photo is the man's distinctive red gloves. Rare as it is for a photograph to have color, you wonder if the long exposure time is what led to the strange blurring effect. This was taken by my partner several days ago, just before he, too, vanished. Whatever is going on, you can be sure that man with the red gloves is somehow involved. Getting to the point, you ask Inspector Flint what exactly he wants from you. To work together, share what we know, sparingly few seem to know the truth. You agree. If what the man says is true and events like this are happening all over the world, getting to the bottom of it will require more than just you. To that end, I would ask that you come to London with me. That man with the red gloves has been sighted in the area and he's not alone. I would bet good money that he knows something about where my partner is. Arrangements have already been made. There are steamship tickets in that file. The ship departs from Boston in two days. You accept the file and tell Inspector Flint that you will report to him with anything you find. With haste, you get your affairs in order and take the very next train to Boston. Flint has already given you more evidence to advance your case than a month of investigation in Arkham. If working together with the ICPC will help you solve this mystery, you have no qualms about putting your trust in him. You make it to London with time to spare and immediately set to work. Trust is born of naivety. Remove one of those tokens from the cast bag and add one more of those. This token can later be removed through an act of secrecy. However, you may become stronger if you stick to your convictions. Okay. And then something new for this campaign. Read the rules for tracking time on the next column. Mark one time in your campaign log. And how I understand it is a lot like the Dunwich Legacy, how they had uh, two different scenarios. And if you went to one, then time would have passed for the other one and you'd see different things. So I've uh, lost one time, which will theoretically change how things play out in future scenarios. Like if I go to one location over another and play things in different orders, it's going to change the events for all of them. All right, so with the prologue uh, narrative out of the way, let's meet my investigator. Again, this is one that I uh, borrowed some of the cards from a online deck. So this is one of the new ones from the Scarlet Keys Investigator expansion, Amina. She's got very balanced for good or bad, although I do like my solo character to be a bit more balanced stats. And her special ability, when you play an asset, reduce its resource cost by three. Dang, she's got a lot of money uh, savings. It enters play with one Doom on it. You can only do that once per round. Her uh, Elder Sign effect, she gets plus two, and you move all Doom from a card at your location to another card at your location. She's got two Mental Trauma to start out, because I chose to give her in the thick of it, uh, which gives her three experience to start the campaign, but two uh, Trauma of my choice. I've also got down the rabbit hole that's going to make cards cheaper to upgrade, but it's more expensive to get new cards added to my deck because a lot of the cards I'm going to be upgrading. And it is supposed to be, we'll see if it works out, a Doom management deck. So she can play things more cheaply by putting Doom on them. Also, a lot of the new Mystic cards, this is uh, one example of them, have Doom mechanics. So this is probably the first card I'm going to play, the Ceremonial Sickle. Let's me fight with either my Willpower or plus one Strength. Since she has three and everything, plus one Strength will be better. And then she can either exhaust it and place one Doom on it to get plus one attack and plus one damage. Or when she defeats an enemy, she can remove one Doom from it. And like a lot of her cards kind of work like that and her own ability puts Doom on things clearly. But I've got things like my Moonlight Ritual to remove all Doom from a card. So yeah, I've never really tried a Doom Mystic solo deck before. I don't know if it was even viable before, but we're going to try it now. I also started out with one of my allies, an Arcane Initiate that lets me uh, dig for spell cards every turn. Although she also starts with some Doom on her, so sometimes I'll just get her, I dig for some spells, and then let her die on purpose. I've got an Enchanted Blade, although I'm probably just going to play the Ceremonial Sickle and uh, use this for plus one strength on a skill check at some point. But uh, there's another sword, it gets some charges, and you can uh, attack with it and boost it with those charges. But again, the Ceremonial Sickle works almost as well and kind of more consistently. The only downside is, of course, the potential Doom <laughs> penalties. And then finally, Living Ink, there's another new card and a new card type. Let me show you what I mean. One of the big new things in the Scarlet Keys for Investigator cards are these customizable cards. They have no experience cost when you first buy them, but then you can upgrade all copies of that card as you go. So this one, I have to circle a skill. I don't have too many things that help me with investigation, so I'm not actually circling it right now, but I'm going to say that my Living Ink in my deck is focused on investigation. So this card, when I play it for free, it'll get three charges, and I lose one charge at the start of each of my turns, but the entire time that it's out, I have plus one to the chosen skill. So I'm going to be a four investigation, four intelligence uh, for the entire time that this stays in play. But as I level up, I can spend experience points, one experience point per box to check off these things. So I could, for example, have plus one to another skill. I could start out with more charges. 
Then I could even do things more extreme, like look vibrancy, living ink grants an additional plus one to the circuit skills and minus one to every other skill. So yeah, you can like really go hard to make these uh, things super upgraded. I have another uh, card like that called Summoned Servitor that's literally useless to me right now. But once I upgrade, it'll be this amazing ally that can like fight for me and investigate for me and all this kind of cool stuff. So that's Amina, but let's get to London and see where our friend went. When it rains. Arriving in London, you patiently await your contact, but none arrives. Inspector Flint, or one of his proxies, was supposed to meet you at a quiet tea house tucked away in a narrow storefront just outside Trafalgar Square. Wondering what could have gone wrong and suspecting the worst, you set off to investigate. Oh, and interesting. When this agenda advances, move all Doom on it to the next agenda. So, ooh. Now, it's just Doom on it, not Doom on, like, my cards and other cards, so that's, uh, not the worst thing. But yeah, it seems like time's just gonna keep on advancing quickly. Clues and capers. You draw your umbrella closer, using it to obscure your identity. Each person you pass on the street could be your contact or be out to get you. In case we need to spend two clues times the number of investigators, which is just one, so two total. And there's only one location in play, the rainy London streets. Cold rain pelts the dreary streets in a rhythmic pitter-patter. Despite the hour, the square is bustling with automobiles, carriages, and pedestrians. Somewhere in this crowded city is the man you seek. Or are you already too late? Okay, so we've got the two clues we need here. It's only one shroud. Oh, but plus one times the current act. So uh, it's going to be a two shroud. Still not bad. And anytime there are no clues on it, you add one times the number of investigators' clues to it. So I can just kind of clue this place up infinitely. Yeah, and sorry, regular viewers, even though this is my favorite game of all time, I don't have any swanky uh, upgraded components like Colin does. <laughs> You'll just have to have the basics with me. Uh, so for my, for my first of three actions, I'm going to play Living Ink. So for this round and the next two rounds following, I'm going to have plus one to my intelligence. So I have a four to investigate against this two shroud I'm at currently. And then I don't really want to play my Doom things until either Doom's about to advance anyway, or until there's actually an enemy to, like, fight with the Ceremonial Sickle to take away the Doom on it. So I'm just going to investigate twice. I'm playing on normal difficulty, so the average modifier is around minus one to minus two. So second action, oh, that doesn't seem good. See, minus one. If there's a concealed mini card at your location, reveal another Chaos token. So there's going to be, like, these little, like, uh, concealed people that I'm going to be hunting down, I think. But yeah, so actually, this is not too bad. Remember, I have two of these in my bag and none of these, so I'm liking that. And then I do have two of the skulls, minus one, minus three instead if you have two or more clues. So I don't want to build up a ton of clues uh, if I can help it. So speaking of clues, that's one out of two. And third action, let's go again. Minus one, awesome. Didn't need the ink yet, but uh, glad to have it. And then I can choose when I want to advance. Oh, I should put another clue here, shouldn't I? So I'm going to wait to advance until the next turn, although I guess that could punish me if I uh, get a treachery card and draw a skull, but we'll just take that chance. And I get a card and a resource. Oh, and this is the other upgradable one. So it's a summon servitor. It is crazy expensive. Look, it takes up an ally slot and an arcane slot. And you also have to discard a card you already have in control to play it. But it gets a free action every turn. However, until you upgrade it, uh, it can't do anything. It just moves around being completely useless. But later on, it can investigate for you, fight for you, take damage for you, uh, bring you along with it when it moves. Lots of cool abilities eventually. But yeah, for this scenario, it's going to be a dead plus one uh, willpower, most likely. All right, let's add one Doom. So this next turn, I can play all the Doom I want. And it'll just uh, vanish for me afterwards. So I'm going to really kid up, hopefully. Don't want to get attacked right now. Let's see. Okay, treachery, pinch in reality. Peril means I couldn't talk to other players about it, but hey, it's just me. Flint, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Well, he's not, because I haven't found him yet. Revelation, you must either choose one, spend one clue, or choose and discard half of the non-weakness cards in your hand. Round it up. All right, just on principle, that sounds ridiculous, but is it so much? I don't care about that card. I don't care about that card, but I do care about that. I do care about that. I do care about that for doom control. So now we'll just uh, spend an action to get a clue back. They're infinite on that location anyway, so that's not too worrying. All right, and back to me. So let's go and use Amina's ability. I can place something for minus three cost. We'll get my ceremonial sickle out, but it does get a doom on it. But hey, we don't check for advancement of the agenda until the mythos phase next round, so we're going to uh, get it anyway. And then let's spend another action to get the arcane initiate out. She's also doomed up. <laughs> and let's go and use her once per round ability so I can search the top three cards of my deck for a spell card. There's actually not a spell-heavy mystic deck, but anything's possible. So Ritual. Oh, man, that's my uh, good uh, investigating one. Oh, there we go. String of Curses. Awesome. So this one is pretty cool. I can choose a non-elite enemy in my location, and I can either automatically evade that enemy, place one Doom on it. It can't take damage for the rest of the round, and I get a clue at my location automatically. Or if the enemy has one or more Doom on it, defeat it and gain a resource for each Doom that was on it, which works well with my Elder Sign ability where I can move Doom from my stuff to any other card in my location. I can put it on an enemy there and then just uh, curse them into <laughs> non-existence. 
and get paid for it. Love that. But I have a third action left, so I might as well try to get that clue back while I'm... Oops, uh, there we go. While I'm still boosted by Living Ink. I will see if my look continues. Uh, yep, that was the minus one. And then I'd draw another token if there was a hidden card with me. So we'll hold off one more time on advancing in case some nastiness comes out of the deck. Ooh, awesome. <laughs> That's the uh, other one I wanted, a Dowsing Rod that'll help me investigate and kind of have uh, similar Doom mechanics to the Ceremonial Sickle. But now let's get to Doom advancing. So it will advance, which will get rid of both the Doom on my cards. But remember, for the special rule, this is staying around. Eventually, you notice the tail. The figure stalks you through the rainy streets, pretending to have some other pressing task at hand. For once, you believe your paranoia may have paid off. But there's only one way to know for sure. So you test your theory, walking faster, moving aimlessly through the streets, and doubling back to see what they do. Every time, there they are, watching you. It's a tale, all right. You flip the script and begin to give chase instead. If they work for the man with the red gloves, you're going to find out. Oh, we take one har. That's not good. And then we put Kensington Gardens, Westminster Abbey, and Big Ben into play. And the Red Glove Man's going to come into play. But uh, in this campaign, you have like hidden characters. So he's not actually at any location yet. Instead, there'll be these mini cards I have to investigate. I'll show you how that works. Oh, wait a second. Each investigator loses their clues. Advance the act directly to 2A. Do not resolve. Okay. Well, then I guess I uh, should not have waited, huh? But I'm so glad I cleared off my doom. Uh, so I guess it was kind of worth it. All right, so here's the red gloved man. Uh, we're going to shuffle one times the number of players. So one decoy card and his card and put them in the locations closest to us. And then we can try to find him. He'll be one of those two cards. And if we do, he's nasty as heck. I don't know if I want to find him. Uh, <laughs> and he can't retaliate. The only detail I could remember was his gloves. Red, red as blood. Nice. But yeah, other than that, he kind of counts as in play, but we can't really affect him with anything until we actually find where he is. So let's see what the new effects say. Figures in the fog. Your mind must be playing tricks on you. Misshapen figures dance through the dense London fog whenever the rain lets up. Are these distortions like the one in the photograph Inspector Flint showed you? Or is it your quarry hiding in the mist and gloom? All right, so now we need four. So we got two rounds, and we probably, now that we know how things work, don't want to put uh, Doom on our cards because we want to advance this before that. The game is afoot. You chase a shadow shrouded by night. It might as well be a needle in a haystack, but still you search, hoping for any clue that may lead you to the truth. You need to chase down the mysterious figure before the agenda advances. If an investigator engages the Red Glove Man, we'll die and we'll advance. Great. And here are our new locations, by the way. So Westminster Abbey, Big Ben, and Rainy London Streets are all adjacent to each other. But Kensington Gardens is kind of a one-way road. So uh, that's to be the location closest to me. But then I get a choice for the second card. I think I'd rather be in this sort of uh, circuitous path here so I have more options available. But before we get to any of that fun, we still have to draw our encounter card. Undercover. If there are no enemies in the shadows, uh, but there are, that's where the Red Glove Man is, Undercover Gage Surge, we draw another card. Otherwise, test Intelligence 4 or Evade 4. If you fail, place a decoy at the location with the most concealed mini cards, flip it face down, and shuffle each concealed mini card at that location. Ah, that's annoying. But yeah, I don't think it's really worth it to try to uh, <laughs> massage this check. I just need, with the plus one for my Living Ink, to get a zero or a plus one. Nope, a minus one. Oh, now there's a mini card in my location, so suddenly these tokens are not so nice. So minus two. Yeah, I definitely fail. Now, it's said the location with the most concealed cards. So my uh, shroud here is now three because stuff advanced. So hopefully the Abbey shroud is lower. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Because to reveal one of these and find out who it is, we need to attack it with it having a strength equal to the shroud. So three where I am now. Evade it with it having a evade value to equal to the shroud, or uh, instead of it discovering a clue. So basically, we can use whatever we're best at. Right now, it would be either the ceremonial sickle with the four strength, or my living ink boosted uh, investigating. All right, so we're getting to my turn. Um, let's go ahead and use our arcane initiate, see if we get another spell. Boom, we did actually. Um, spectral razor. Add your willpower value to the skill value for an attack, so I'd be a six. And immediately before this attack, you may engage the attacked enemy, and the attack deals plus one damage. Nice event overall. Definitely have too many attacking options, but uh, it's okay. The Dowsing Rod can help me investigate better. Speaking of the Dowsing Rod, I think for my first action, I have a plan here. <laughs> yeah, to zoom out a bit so I can fit everything better. I think for my first action, I'm going to play the Dowsing Rod with my character's ability, so I only pay one resource. Man, she uh, definitely keeps her money, but it does get a Doom. But if this one works, it'll also let me investigate with a plus one intelligence, or I could just use my willpower. And I can exhaust the dowsing rod when I investigate to place a doom on it and move for free to a connecting location. Or if I discover the last clue at a location, I can remove one doom. So that's what I'm going to do for my uh, second action. I'm going to investigate with dowsing rod. So that's plus one intelligence, plus one from living ink just for this round. I'll be at a five. So I just need to not draw terribly. Minus two, that's fine. 
and I could either discover the clue or reveal this guy. I'm going to discover the clue because that will be the last clue at the location. It'll get rid of the uh, Doom token, and then it comes right back from the location ability. Really, that was mostly about getting rid of the Doom. And now for my uh, third action, I'm going to try to actually uncover this person. Okay, and that was minus one or minus three if I have two clues. I only have one, so that was perfectly fine. But it's a decoy, so the Red Glove Man is one of the two here. Darn. That was it for my turn, but I'm pretty much uh, kitted out as much as I want to be. The best weapon in my deck, the best investigating tool in my deck. I'm about to lose the Living Ink, unfortunately. I've got an ally. I do have a much better one, but until they come out, I'm not going to worry about them. And then I've got two really nice attack options, a Doom Mitigator. These two are kind of a bit dead, but hey, it's always good to have some cards to boost things. Ooh, and I get Scroll of Secrets. So this one is um, errated with the taboo list where it's a free action instead of a action action. You exhaust it and spend one of its three secrets. Look at the bottom card of any investigator deck or the encounter deck. And then you can discard that card, add it to its owner's hand, or place it on the bottom of the deck or on top of the deck. And I have another card that combos with that that lets me like ignore a card or play it for a cheaper cost if I already know it's on top of the deck. So I'm probably going to save that until I have the uh, combo ready to play. Gosh, I have even more money. I should probably uh, <laughs> maybe put things in that let me spend my money more. Although all these events will be good with the uh, money I have. All right, we go to three dooms. We really want to find this guy this turn if we can. And oh no, attached to the location with the most... Oh, actually, this is fine. Locked door is going to go on the location with the most clues. And since I haven't gone to any of these places... Oh no, it's the rainy London streets and I really wanted to hang out there. Okay. <laughs> So uh, here's the thing. I've got three actions. I've got to move here and investigate. Huh, I could use my dowsing rod and put a doom on it. That would give me a free move. And then I would have uh, three potential investigations because my living ink is gone now. So I'm not going to be investigating as well. Yeah, hopefully one doom won't kill us. I'm going to go to use the dowsing rod's uh, investigate ability. But first I can move to a connecting location. So this is my first action, so I'll have two more uh, potential investigates if things don't go well. The Gothic Abbey near the palace is both a place of religious significance and a traditional burial site for English royals. Lights flicker in the windows as the gentle rain turns to an ominous downpour. You would not be the first to seek guidance on such hallowed ground, but you wonder what else may be at work within its aged walls. Oh shoot, alright, one shroud, we can do that, and it's got one clue. And parlay. Choose a location and test uh, one willpower to ask around the abbey. For each point you succeed by, look at the revealed side of a concealed mini card at the chosen location without exposing it once per game. That's pretty awesome, although <laughs> clearly we're not in the right place. But yes, I was uh, right to put the people here. It's easy to search. So uh, this is uh, still part of our first action. We get to look at one of these. And the Dowsing Rod gives plus one to our intelligence. So we are at a plus three. So that's fine. Ah, and there they are. So I think I get rid of this one. All right, so we become engaged with this guy again. I'm not sure if that's a good thing, but we do advance immediately. We still got two actions left. Let's not forget that. After much toil and pursuit, you finally catch up to the figure you've been chasing. A feeling of vindication washes over you as you spot the red gloves the man wears. It was no phantom you chase. This is the one you have sought all along. You corner him in a narrow alleyway, sheets of rain and fog amassing your approach. Several more figures flank the man. A meeting, perhaps? To your surprise, he casts an expressionless glance in your direction. Then, fast as a flash of lightning and gone just as swiftly, a formless shape ducks out of view. A chunk of a nearby building goes along with it. When you turn to question your quarry about what happened, they have all fled east. You inch forward and examine the partially excised wall, covered in an ectoplasmic substance, like the negative of an undeveloped photo. Now, set the Red Glove Man aside, out of play. Put the set-aside Tower Bridge and Tower of London locations into play. Shuffle the set-aside Crimson Conspiracy and Outsider Encounter sets into the Encounter deck, along with the Encounter discard pile. And then we go straight to 3A again. Yes, if the same thing happened. All right, here we go, the connection. Okay, so now they don't have any special rules. This is just a regular 9 Doom threshold. And right now I've got 3 plus 1 on my Dowsing Rod. It is clear now that Inspector Flint's hunches were correct. The man in the red gloves is not operating alone, and whatever he's up to, it has something to do with the recent vanishings. You could wait to report what you've seen, but by then the man and his cohorts may have already put into motion whatever scheme they are planning. No, you have only one choice. You must find the man with the red gloves at all costs. Your gaze turns eastward, in the direction you last saw the man heading. Over the Tower Bridge lies the famed Tower of London, where even more eyes watch your approach, these belonging to a conspiracy of dark and brooding ravens. For what reason could he be heading there? Okay, so we have to be at the Tower of London to spend three clues. We've got one, and there's one in our location. Yeah, you know, I guess they never said to get rid of this card, so I guess I'll leave it there for now. No, no, I just checked, and once there are no enemies in shadows, all of these go away. That makes sense. <laughs> All right, so we've got two actions left. Uh, let's definitely investigate for my second action. My dowsing rod will still boost me to four, and if I get the last clue, I'll be able to get rid of the doom on it. 
And I got a zero, so there we go. We have two clues out of the three we need. But now maybe for my third action, I go back. Because look, uh, the Tower Bridge is only adjacent to the rainy streets right now. And the Tower of London is only past that. So I need to uh, go back through the streets to get over there. And yeah, Doom's not super high. So let's go ahead and uh, use my Dowsing Rod for my third action. I'm going to move first and then investigate. This would get me my final clue I need. Well, the shout is three, so I'm only one up. So <laughs> pretty good chance this won't work out. Nope. So I failed the test, but hey, I still got the movement. It just uh, cost me one Doom. All right, what do I draw for the turn? Four sec. Ooh, this is the one I was talking about that goes with the Scroll of Secrets. Because look, it says fast. Play when investigator your location would draw a card from their deck or from the encounter deck. Name a card. If the drawn card is a named card, you cancel it. Or if it's one of your cards, you play it without an action for minus two cost. So if I can get the scroll of secrets out, I can like look at the encounter deck. And when it's a really nasty one, I can put it on top on purpose and uh, then ignore it for foresight and not have an encounter for that turn. So yeah, that's one of the cards I bought with the three experience. Oh, you know, I forgot to take an extra horror, so I should be there. Yeah, I'm way too rich. I need things that cost more money. All right, we're at four doom or five with a dowsing rod. Oh, uh, Coterie Agent. Okay, so this is going to be another concealed person, so it'll be two decoy cards and one real person. Uh, Forest. After Coterie Agent enters a shadow, place a Doom on it. Oh, and then if we find them, we just discard them. So I'm not even sure why they have the stats, but okay. So basically, if I want to put a lot of effort into finding them, I can get rid of the Doom on them. Okay. All right, I think there's a good chance I'm not going to care about this person, but we'll put one in the lane, rainy streets. One on the Tower Bridge I'm going to... Well, actually, I don't want on the Tower Bridge. If I'm just going to ignore them, <laughs> I'd rather them not be... I'd rather it not be penalizing me if I draw the tablet uh, chaos token. Oh, geez, I just realized I couldn't have even investigated the locked door. So, huh. Yeah, I guess let's take the Doom off of the Dowsing Rod because I would have just done a movement action anyway. But I still need one more clue. But I do want to do this uh, little combo here. So I'm going to play Scroll of Secrets. That's one action. Now it has three tokens on it. And for one, let's go ahead and look at the bottom encounter deck card. Oh, God. Paracausal Entity. That looks terrible. So yeah, let's uh, go ahead and put it on top of the deck. <laughs> and then we will discard it when we uh, would draw it at the end of the turn with our four, or sorry, at the beginning of the next turn with our foresight ability. Now, that was my first action. I am a little bit worried about using the Doom abilities now with the uh, <laughs> them being able to put out people with Doom that I don't want to deal with. But still, using the Dazzling Ride would accelerate things a lot. Well, either way, let's get a free draw with the Arcane Initiate. Ooh, and good. We're going to shuffle that guy in. But deny existence. What is this one? Fast. Play when encounter card or enemy attack would cause you to do one of the following. Discard cards, lose resources, lose actions, take damage or take horror, and you ignore that one aspect. Hey, it's a free defense card. I don't mind that. All right, so for my second actual action, I am going to doom up the Dowsing Rod to move and investigate. Running away from our hidden friends and going to the Tower Bridge. Spanning the River Thames, the newly built Tower Bridge has quickly become a cultural icon, connecting central London with the East End, which has seen a much growth in recent years. To the north, just over the bridge, a dark cloud encircles the Tower of London. All right, good. Only two shroud. That's not too bad. Uh, one clue. Oh, interesting. Maybe there's another way in. Test uh, willpower or intelligence. If you succeed, put the set-aside Trader's Gate location into play. Stories have been told of the prisoners who were brought to the Tower of London by barge along the River Thames. Perhaps you could follow their morbid example. Oh, gosh, because... Why am I not looking at this? The main gate into the tower is locked and securely guarded. As an additional cost to enter the Tower of London, investigators at the Tower Bridge must spend two clues as a group. Okay, so I'm investigating here. With a four, thanks to my dowsing rod. Okay, I got it. So that's my third clue, but now I need two more, or I need to do a really tough test. So, huh. most of the locations in the game have been one times the number of players, so I'm worried if I go to the Tower of London, I'll be one clue short. So let's try to do this uh, Trader's Gate thing. So I have one action left, because I played the scroll. So, yeah, let's uh, go ahead and try to do this. So I have three willpower and three intelligence, so five is so much. I do have a ton of cards in my hand, but but I can get rid of that one. That's will. I don't want to get rid of foresight, even though it's two intelligence, because that terrible card is on top. Deny existence is a wild. So if I did summon servitor, spectral razor, and deny existence, that'd be plus three. That would get me to six, but uh, man. What I could do instead is back through the stupid streets, maybe go to Kensington Gardens or to Big Ben, or even try to get rid of the locked door for the London streets. Although now that's a four shroud, so now that's stupid. Yeah, I'm regretting some of my choices, but for my final action, I'm going to head back to the London streets. Oh, well. All right, what I draw? Scroll of Secrets. Well, I'll just put that here because I'm about to play Foresight, right? So with all the other Doom out, we're at seven. Um, although I can get rid of my Dowsing Rod's Doom, hopefully pretty easily. All right, and I say this card is the Paragur Entity? Par 
Paraplastic? Paracausal entity? Okay, Paracausal. Yay. All right, so he's ignored. <laughs> uh, yeah, I forgot that I actually have to remember the name. All right, so let's go to Kensington Gardens. The night's unusually somber mood is enough to drown out even the beauty of the Royal Park. The round pond threatens to flood as the downpour continues. This place has been a popular meeting ground for many years. Perhaps the man with the red gloves and his cohorts are here? Oh, nice. This one's got a victory point experience if I uh, get all the clues from it. And I plan to, and I'm assuming that the bridge will have at least one clue itself, so I should be safe once I get this one. So for my second action, I will investigate here uh, with my dowsing rod, and if I get the last clue, I'll get rid of my doom, so that's great. I need uh, minus two or better. Minus three. Darn it. <laughs> All right, and for um, another action, let's do the same thing again. Minus two. Okay, good. So I got the last clue in location. That gives me four clues. And I activate the bottom thing for the dowsing rod, so I lose the doom. And all right, uh, next turn I'll run back to the Tower Bridge, uh, open the gate to the Tower of London, and then I just got to hopefully get a clue from the Tower of London, and I can do this thing. And too many cards. Oh, this is one of my special ones. Word of Woe. It's fast, so it won't cost me an action. Play during your turn. Place one Doom on an asset you control to resolve an action ability on it, ignoring all costs, including the action costs. And then if Word of Wheel, so that's my other like unique character card, is in my discard pile, I shuffle it into my deck. So we keep on kind of recurring each other. All right, I mean, it's more Doom, but I do still have my Moonlight Ritual, so I could, like, use that to move with the Dowsing Rod, and then uh, play Moonlight Ritual to get rid of it both, although it's actually saving me actions, I'm not really sure. <laughs> we'll see what happens. And yet, yeah, there's so much money. That's the one thing I didn't realize when I was looking at this deck. I probably want to have some more expensive options soon, because her uh, discount is taking care of so much. We're up to 6-7 Doom, again, because I got rid of the one on my Dowsing Rod. And this time we got actually... No, it's another Paracausal Entity. Hunter, when Paracausal Entity engages you, look at the top card of your deck. If it's not a weakness, set it aside out of play as a hollow. I don't know what that means. Okay. <laughs> well, great. And either kill this guy or run away from him. Huh. I mean, the good thing is I'm way off in the corner of nowhere. So if I do get away, it's not going to be too big of a deal. All right. So it's set aside out of play as a hollow. Do I ever get it back? I don't know. My dream diary got taken. All right, so theoretically, I have two turns before Doom advances, so I don't want to do anything that's, like, Doom-heavy this turn. All right, so let's play things safe and just kill this guy. I don't want to do all the things that would, like, give me Doom for escaping. Like, I could String of Curses him to escape, but that wouldn't be good. So Spectral Razor, hey, it's going to cost money. This is my first action. So I fight with my willpower value and my fight value, so that'll be a six. And um, I can engage them, and I do one plus one damage or plus two if he's not elite. So way more than I need to, and I got a six to hit him. He's only got a three, so I think uh, pretty much anything except the minus four and the auto fail, I'll be okay. Of course, now that I said that, nope, we're good. He's dead. Now again, I don't know what the hollow thing does, but <laughs> we're going to say that I don't get my card back for now. And then for the rest of my turn, just one, two, and next turn we'll rush in there, and then we can use my dowsing rod and like my free actions and all that kind of stuff, because uh, we won't worry about Doom at that point. For my draw, I got another enchanted blade, so that'll be good. More things to punch the red glove man with if I need to. And yep, here we go. So we're at eight Doom, <laughs> very close. But again, all this Doom will clear away, so if I like use every single thing I have that adds Doom to cards, it won't hurt me at all. Hunting Shadow. Peril. You must either spend one clue or take two damage. We're not spending a clue. <laughs> we had to work hard for that clue. We're taking two damage. I mean, yeah, that's the first damage I've taken. I'm still very far from death. Well, not very far. I guess three damage would kill me, but I still have my Arcane Initiate if I need to sacrifice her. Which reminds me, did I use her last turn? I don't know. Let's go ahead and use her right now and get a spell if we can. Ooh, another String of Curses or Water Protection. I'd rather have the Water Protection to cancel a Treachery card as I draw it. It's always nice. I'm going to put this. Well, here, whatever. The Summon Servitor is also just a dead card, basically, so we'll put it there. All right, now we're going to go into the Tower of London. It'll cost us two clues to do so, but we're going to do it by using the Dowsing Rod to move in and get and investigate as a free action. In fact, now, let's make it even better. We're going to go ahead and use Word of Woe, pay two. So two Doom will go on the Dowsing Rod, but we haven't actually used an action yet. We still have all three of our actions left. A Conspiracy of Ravens circle ominously over the castle walls. Far too many to be a coincidence. Ooh, it's got a three shroud. After you end your turn at the Tower of London, you must either lose two resources, reach enemy in the shadows, attacks you. Oh, that's why they have those stats. It does have one clue, so <laughs> we made the right call there. Remember, this investigation is still off of a fast action, so I have three actions after this. Okay, so I've got a four, and the shroud is three. We don't need another scroll of secrets, so that would get me to a five. And um, I don't think I need deny existence and water protection. Let's go to make it a six investigate. Oh, plus one. Never mind. <laughs> but we got a third clue. 
So before we uh, spend any actions, let's go ahead and spend our three clues in advance. Quietly and cautiously, you follow the figures from a distance. With measured haste, he darts to and fro inside the ominous tower, searching for something. Finally, while you watch from the shadows, the man with the red gloves finds what he's looking for, a loose brick along one of the candlelit hall's many columns. He casually rotates the stone back into place with a kind of nonchalance, as if you were dealing with a piece of misplaced laundry. To your surprise, a section of the nearby wall rotates in turn, revealing a secret passageway. He ascends into darkness, and you follow in secret. Okay, put the set-aside tower prison location into play. Attach the set-aside the Eye of Raven's key to the tower prison, not controlled by anyone. Move all concealed mini cards in play to the tower prison. Oh my god, are you serious? Draw the set-aside red-gloved man and resolve his concealed keyword, putting all of his concealed mini cards into play at the tower prison. Oh, what? I have to... Oh, blah, 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 blah. So yeah, basically, oh my gosh, um, <laughs> we've got five cards. Uh, one of them is the Coterie Agent. One of them is the Red Gloved Man. Oh my gosh, it's got a four shroud, which means that's going to be what I need to attack with or evade with or everything. Okay, while well, an investigator at a tower prison is performing a skill test, spend one clue. I don't have any clues left. <laughs> that investigator gets plus two skill value for this test. Uh, when a concealed mini card would be better play anywhere other than the prison, it goes to the prison. Yeah, all right, great. Alrighty, well, you can get lucky. Maybe the first one will be the guy. All right, so what do I actually have to do to win this? I'm assuming I have to, like, find the red glove man? Call red-handed. Somewhere in these forgotten crypts, the man with the red gloves is searching for something, but for what purpose? All right, so if I find him out of those five cards, I can parlay with him to put a resource on him. And then if I either kill him or have one resource on him, I'll advance. So I need to find him and then do the thing. They mentioned the key is here, not controlled by anybody. This is a new type of card. Uh, basically, either you can control these or, like, enemies can get them, from what I understand from the rules. When it's uh, controlled by a good person, then it's on, like, the stable side, it helps you, or it's on the unstable side when an enemy controls it or, like, by using its power. But uh, for now, nobody has it, so I think we just have to try to get it, probably by finding the Red Glove Man. All right, so I've still got three actions. Let's spend a secret and look at the bottom encounter card again. I don't have any way to cancel it, but if it's kind of mediocre, then I'll just put it on top. Seeing shadows. Put it into your threat area. After you fail a skill test while at a location with a concealed mini card, take one horror. Huh. It's really not too bad. And also, it's a treachery, so I could just get rid of it entirely with a word of protection. So yeah, we'll, we'll put that on the top. All right, for my actual actions, I guess I'll move to the prison. For my second action, let's attack one of the concealed cards. So I can exhaust a ceremonial sickle, add a doom to it, because again, all doom's about to reset anyway. And that'll give me plus one, plus two, and plus one damage. That part doesn't matter. <laughs> but I'll have a five strength. And let's discard one of my enchanted blades to get up to six strength. So two over what I need, because again, to reveal one of these, it's equal to the shroud value. So I have a reasonable chance here. Will I get it? Oh, so that's a uh, plus two. And then I can move all doom on one card to another card. I mean, it's all about to go away, so I guess it doesn't really matter. But sure, whatever. <laughs> All right, and we get to reveal what? <laughs> do, 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 do. And I still have, what do I have? I moved one action, I attacked one action, so I still have one action left. Now, these still hang around because there's at least one other hidden person, but he's engaged with me. So what can I do? I can either parlay with him or I can kill him. But now that my sickle is exhausted, I'd have to attack him twice. So let's try the parlay, I guess. All right, so what is it? Uh, willpower or intelligence? So I have three for either. I can discard a bunch of stuff. Uh, willpower or intelligence. Moonlight Ritual is intelligence. Water Protection is anything. Summon Servitor is willpower. So really, <laughs> the best I can get to is like five? It's probably not good enough. Yeah, I mean, that's just an even thing. It's definitely going to be easier for me to kill him. Yeah, so I feel like I should just give up my last action. <laughs> as terrible as that is, because I don't want to get attacked by him automatically. And then I'll have to suffer through whatever Doom effect happens on my turn. But... I'll get uh, one card for at the end of my turn. I might get another card from the Dowsing Rod. I'll be able to, if I want to, attack him with the Sickle. So I think, like, everything will be a little bit nicer. So, yeah, he attacks me. One and one. So I have two health left and five sanity left. And then, darn it. All right, well, I guess that's better for the attacking idea. Okay. Then into the Mythos phase, we've got seven, eight, and then on my Ceremonial Sickle, three more. A ton of doom is what I'm saying, <laughs> but it all goes away as this advances. As the night grows deeper and the rain becomes a torrent, you flinch at every moving shadow, every sound, every shape. You wonder if perhaps this investigation is getting the best of you, or maybe there are more of them than you thought watching you lying in wait for the perfect opportunity to strike. 
Okay, I must decide. Search the encounter deck and discard pile for a coterie agent, enemy, and draw it. So that would just be another person hiding in the shadows. It's not too bad. Or each investigator takes... No, not one damage, one heart. We're not doing that. So here we go. We'll get coterie agent C. So uh, yeah, they're going to have a doom on them, and they're going to have even more hidden cards. But now that I found the red glove, man, I don't really care. Now we've got seven doom to play around with, although one on the new coterie agent. Oh my gosh, thank the lord that I found this guy. <laughs> what I did? <laughs> How ridiculous. <laughs> Deep fog blots out the moonlight, bathing the city in utter darkness. From the rooftops, ravens watch your progress with inhuman intelligence. Every moving shadow sets your mind racing. If you don't find the man with the red gloves and stop his plans, who knows what he will do next? All right, so we're going to try to get as many cards as we can. So this is a free action, and this is a free action, because we can look at the bottom card of our own deck and draw it into our hand if we want. So first we'll look for a spell. Yes, water protection. That's a wild. That's definitely what we're going for. Awesome. Oh, and sorry, I forgot to draw this. What was this? If you have no clues, false lead gain surge. Um, should I just ignore it with water protection? Sure. Whatever, get out of here. Did I put a different card on top? Uh, maybe I'm remembering wrong. Oh, wait a second. I can't have the scroll of secrets end. Ah, uh, I've been cheating this whole time. Look at these double hand things going on. Clearly, I would not have played this over my sickle. Darn it. All right, so I'm not going to get another card, obviously. But I also uh, must have cheated at other times. Sorry, everybody. You probably realized that a while ago. No, I'm throwing them a word of protection. I'm just back to where I was. You know what? Screw it then. I'm just going to kill the red glove man. <laughs> That's way easier for me. So by putting a doom on it, um, I'm going to get plus two to my attacks. I'm already at five strength and plus one damage. That's the important part because he only has uh, two times the number of players. So I'm tied with him now. Uh, so enchanted blade plus one. And then we'll just do both my strings of curses to make it uh plus three whatever water protection two plus four so literally the only thing that can get me is the stone where i draw another token or the auto failure because i'm four over maybe i overcommitted a bit here nope we're good so i kill him let's see how this thing resolves the figure reels backwards grasping at his wound something small clatters to the ground the man says nothing only glares at you from the darkness his gloves seem to ripple around his hands like the disturbed surface of a deep crimson pool and after a moment he straightens himself then blending to the shadows he tips his hat and is gone okay we add him to the victory display and we get resolution one you search for the man with the red gloves through every possible hiding place and down every shadowed corridor, but he is well and truly gone. It's as if he vanished into thin air. You wonder for a moment if he was somehow erased from existence like the other disappearances, but you don't believe it. There is no mark, no ectoplasmic remains. He simply was there, and then he was not. You give up searching for him, and instead examine the object that clattered to the ground during your scuffle. It's a small ruby marble, no larger than an eye. Indeed, you investigate the crypt that the man was rummaging through and find that the marble's size matches the eye sockets of the long-deceased corpse inside. They must have been buried with it, meaning perhaps the marble is what the man with the red gloves sought all along. But why? Investigating further, you find neither name nor epitaph identifying the corpse buried here, only the following lines of what appears to be poetry, chiseled into the lid of the body's coffin. With red we are bound, through red we are one. Thus in red do we bury our kin and our ken. May you rest until you are needed once more. Before you have time to even consider what this might mean, you hear the telltale rumbling of the secret passageway shifting upstairs once more, and the pounding of heavy footsteps down the stairwell. You arm yourself and prepare for a fight. To your surprise, it is Inspector Flint who greets you, held at gunpoint by a woman dressed in a black suit, wide-brimmed hat, and matching black trousers. She has ebony dark skin, cold eyes underscored by heavy bags, and short curly hair. Two other suits flank her, both of whom say nothing and stand like statues as she enters the crypt. She flashes an unidentifiable silver badge and motions for you to stay put. Where did the man with the red gloves go? She asks. And who are you? Can I put my hands down now? Inspector Flint says. All right, so we get Victory X. Uh, we just had Kensington Gardens and the Red Glove Man, so two experience. Oh, and we choose Investigator to be the Bearer of the Eye of Ravens and update the campaign log. From now on, whenever we become the Keeper of a Key, the key's handy. It will begin play attached to the character, so we would have to play it. And this one says, During a skill test of your location, the Performing Investigator set their base skill value to six, but then you flip it. And shift. Draw the top card of the encounter deck. Then if an investigator shipped this key, flip it to its stable set. Okay, so basically, I can get a six on a skill test, put at the cost of drawing an encounter card. Ouch. All right, we note that we haven't seen the last of the Red Glove Man. One time, so we're at two total, and we go to an interlude, the foundation. Talk, the woman commands. I'm a detective with the ICPC, Flint barks back. Flint, Lee Flint, and you're going to be in a lot of trouble when they hear about this. I assure you, I will not. And you, she asks, glaring in your direction... You explain that you are an independent investigator working with Flint. She takes a moment to read your gaze, presumably to tell if you are lying. She, like Flint, seems low on trust. Finally, after a long, baited moment, she holsters her firearm. Flint's hands drop to his side. 
You let out a breath you didn't know you were holding. We've been after that red-gloved man for quite some time. This is the first time we've gotten this close. He seems to have a knack for slipping away. She nods to the two suits flanking her, a tall, athletic, pale-skinned woman and a sharp, clean-shaven man, and motions toward the walls. They keep a hand on their holsters as they scour the perimeter of the room. But who is we, exactly? Inspector Flint asks. You've been wondering the very same thing. Your investigator has a British accent, whoops, but she doesn't seem to be part of any local outfit you've ever heard of. She waits for a confirmation from her two subordinates before continuing. All clear, ma'am, the man states. She sighs and crosses her arms. All right, what I'm about to tell you cannot leave this room under any circumstances. Am I clear? Under penalty of what, exactly? Summary execution, she states without hesitation. Your throat closes tight. Even your partner flinches for a moment. Well then, I suppose we don't have much of a choice, do we? He glances at you. You nod. You might as well hear what she has to say. I am Commissioner Taylor, and these are Agents Hudson and Antonova. We are with the Foundation, an international agency devoted to the discovery, research, and containment of objects with paradimensional capability. What kind of baloney? Flint practically laughs, but the woman who calls herself Taylor shows no sign of humor. After the Great War, many treaties and accords were signed, Paris, Versailles, but keeping the peace wasn't the only goal. There were oddities, you see, during the war, things that did not add up. The Foundation's purpose is to find these things that do not add up and ensure that they cannot be used for such purposes ever again. Well, this is a hell of a con you buttons have cooked up, Flint says, but the darker tone in his voice indicates he doesn't even believe himself. And you're inclined to agree. The fact that Commissioner Taylor even knows of the Red Glove Man at all is proof she has inside knowledge. You decide that it's more likely she is telling the truth than lying and ask what she intends to do with you. She paces in uncomfortable silence before finally letting out a sigh. Well, I certainly can't have your investigation running parallel to my own, and you might have information that could be pertinent to our work. So I say we work together. Work together or work for you? Flint asks pointedly, his eyes narrowing. She allows herself a smile. You are a clever man, I'll give you that. She nods to Agent Hudson, who produces several badges and hands them to you. You'll be your own cell of the Foundation, operating under our authority, but with independence. All you need to do is agree to report your findings to us. She locks eyes with Flint appraisingly. You'll be our point of contact. You ask Taylor what you get out of the arrangement, besides the lifted threat on your lives. We'll hand over the intel we have on the organization the Red Glove Man works for and provide travel papers that can get you anywhere in the world, no questions asked, at no expense. Flint eyes the badge like one might an explosive, turning it over and over in his hands. Two minutes ago you were pointing a gun at me, now you're offering me a job. Yes, well, are you in? You pull Flint aside to speak with him in private. The discussion is short and hushed, full of conjecture and paranoid theories about this foundation and their true motives, but in the end you decide to accept her offer. If it'll help you get to the bottom of whatever's going on, it's the only real choice. Very well then, Taylor explains. The Red Glove Man is just one operative of this organization, or perhaps its leader. That we are unable to determine. They call themselves the Red Coterie, so named due to the red garments they wear. They are after artifacts scattered across the world, which possess paradimensional capabilities. The very same kind of objects we seek to find and contain. We call them keys. You ask Commissioner Taylor what she means by the term paradimensional. Imagine a cake with many layers, she explains. Everything we see and feel exists on one layer, but there are many more layers above and below ours. Something that is paradimensional exists in one layer, but draws energy from other parallel layers. As a result, these keys operate outside the laws of our dimension, cause and effect. If left unchecked, they can be used to inflict terrible harm on our world. Our job, your new job, is to get them out of the hands of the Coterie and keep them secure in Foundation custody. If these keys are as powerful as the Foundation believes, you agree that they should be kept in safe hands. But you cannot help but wonder what this has to do with the disappearance you've been investigating. If anything, Flint locks eyes with you and gives you the slightest shake of his head. He has no intention of telling them. Alright, so do we tell Taylor about the disappearances, or do not? I'll tell her. You decide it's best to tell Commissioner Taylor why you were looking into the Red Gold Man to begin with. Flint lets out an audible sigh. <laughs> she mulls it over for a few moments, then shakes her head. That is something to look into, but your primary objective is to acquire the keys the Coterie is searching for at all costs. Am I understood? Taylor further explains she will forward any relevant information to Flint's office with some sensitive details omitted, of course. She will also provide the ICPC with the requisite papers regarding Flint's new position. Oh, and Agent Flint, she says on her way out, addressing him by his new title. Your cell may have the independence to act on their own accord, but do not forget that you report directly to me. I expect you to do so without reservation should you discover anything of import. He nods, only the slightest hint of resistance giving him away. Um, 
Oh, remove one token. I don't have any of those. Add another one of those? If there are already four, each investigator earns one experience. But ah, it's making the bag worse. All right, and then I'm going to record my cell told the truth to Taylor. The next morning, your cell meets in the tea room near Trafalgar Square, where you had originally intended to meet the previous night. Together, you go over the documentation provided to Flint by this foundation. It's all a bit difficult to believe, if I'm being honest, Flint says. But everything checks out. The travel papers, the job transfer, all of it. Not even my boss questioned it for a moment. I guess we're secret agents now, huh? You agree, unbelievable as it might seem. It's no less strange than the matters you had already been looking into. Right. Well, I think the best thing to do is to split up. Shanghai is where I grew up. I have connections there I can leverage. So I'll head there first. Where you want to investigate next is up to you. Meet up with me later and we can figure out where to go from there. The Foundation has several leads concerning the whereabouts of the Red Coterie. Here we go, branching. Okay, one is likely in Inspector Flint's home of Shanghai, where there have been many rumors about the existence of a secret cabal led by a mysterious woman with a red parasol. In Alexandria, there have been a rash of beastly killings throughout the city. The Foundation has reason to believe a member of the Coterie is involved. A string of high-profile burglaries in Buenos Aires has led the Foundation to believe that one of the Coterie members is responsible. It's likely a key is the primary target. A member of the Coterie has a sanctum in Nairobi. Perhaps there you might learn what they have planned. The Foundation has procured the Journal of a Prospector, recently working in Anchorage, perhaps the site of a key. A Coterie agent operating out of Istanbul has already reached out to Foundation operatives, a defector perhaps, or it could be a trap. Locals in Kathmandu have reported seeing a spirit matching the description of another Coterie agent. A de oh my god, there's so many. A deadly Coterie agent has been sighted in Marrakesh. Reports of tomb robberies and strange overgrowth have the local Foundation operatives on edge. And a Coterie agent has made a name for himself in Havana, where rum and other illicit goods are being smuggled into the United States. How many is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yeah, I knew this one had more scenarios than uh, usual, but that's crazy. Okay, read the rules for embarking and travel. Let's see. So in short, uh, we can travel around wherever we want. Not all of these locations are going to be scenarios, it sounds like, because uh, you'll unlock other scenarios that are red. So yeah, and it costs one time to move. So we're at London. So if we wanted to go to Rome or like Constantinople, it looks like that would be one. The green spots are side adventures, like the Venice one is uh, the one with the carnival or whatever. <laughs> um, so... You can stop those if you want to do a side adventure, but you can also pass through them for no time. And yeah, apparently some of these are going to be just like interludes where we just read stuff. Some of them will be full scenarios. And then we'll eventually unlock some of the red ones, like going to Reykjavik or Kabul or Tunguska or any of those spots. Wow, this is a lot, man. <laughs> but we'll stop there. Uh, not sure where I'll adventure. I haven't spent my two experience yet, but hopefully you enjoyed that one. Uh, will I record more? I'm not sure. You know me. I, I have so many new games to cover that it's tough for me to just go and do a big campaign. Maybe I'll leave that to Colin, but I'll think about it. But for now, good gaming. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed uh, this first look at the new campaign, and I'll see you at the next stop.